I thought we should talk about what is all this Tao business anyway, which uh, that kind of title comes from an engineer from uh, National, I believe, Bob Pease. And um, it seems to generate a lot of confusion. And there seems, there's two Tao's that we speak of, right? The first Tao, right, is the time constant of a first order system, right, with exponential decay. And that can be an RC network where a Tau equals RC, or it can be, um, you know, a cooling cup of coffee, anything like that, right? And it's important to know what Tau is because when that system dissipates its energy, that energy should be dissipated in approximately five Tau, right? Why? Well, if I substitute T, for five tau, right? I have the tau's cancel. E to the minus five is close to zero, right? So when you are trying to look at the time domain response of any first order system, you're you're going to be looking at that tau. And if you're testing one of these circuits, right, the pulse width of your um, function generator has to be greater than five tau so that you can actually see the system charge and discharge, all right? And that's the tau that you would have seen from your circuit design course. Then there's the other tau, the tau that is the dummy variable that when we're integrating an equation based on time, yet that resulting equation is a function of time, we cannot use um, we can't integrate with respect to a variable that's in the limit, all right? And usually we run into this um, in the time domain convolution integral, right, where we want a function of time. We have two functions of time that go into the mathematical um, convolution integral, and so we just have to switch to some kind of dummy variable and we call that tau because it's time, right? But it really could be any variable because in the end, we integrate out and that upper limit um, converts this back to a function of t, all right? And if you try to read other books or go to the you know, Wikipedia, everybody does this what thing. And one approach would be to just um, kind of, air quotes, buckle down until you realize that there's two different things. However, what people who say things like that forget is that when you're first learning, it's kind of hard. And you think that every variable kind of means something. And it, and it does, right? But unfortunately for this integration variable, it is just kind of a mathematical trick so that we can integrate for time and get a function of time. All right. So let's see though where we can, uh, an example where this kind of falls apart, just kind of, you know, sucking it up if you will. So let's have g of t equals a step function and h of t equals this, which is the impulse response of a low-pass filter, right? And it's 1 over tau and e to the minus tau, which if it were an RC circuit, it'd be RC. If it was a cooling mass, it'd be something else. All right, so we put it into the convolution integral, u of tau times e to the minus t minus tau divided by tau. Wait, uh-oh. This is not and you know something to be integrated with it's a constant and equals rc right this is our integration variable that does relate to d tau right so um you know what what is it an engineer to do right and we are kind of out of time variables i could try capital t 
but that also means period or time shift. Uh, TD means other things. X can even mean position, right? So you, we, you've been in school long enough and you've studied so many things that in fact we are running out of variables to use, all right? Now, what if we looked at it as a frequency rather than a time constant? Well, I could just say alpha equals one over tau, right? Which is the RC tau if it's a circuit, right? But it's the time constant tau. Or we could call it omega naught, right? Then we would rewrite HT omega naught e to the minus omega t naught ut, of course. Or we could write this. And then you could put it back into that um, convolution integral, and there'd, there'd be no confusion. All right. Now here's the thing. Even though we started you off in your circuits course in time domain, and in 110 we started off in time domain convolution, we actually spend a lot of our time in the S domain, or frequency when S equals J omega. More about that later. We just set the real part equal to zero, right? It's going to be better to use omega naught equals one over tau, all right? Because we're we're going to be talking about things in frequency anyway. All right. Now, what about when you go back to the time domain? Well, rather than, you know, 5 tau taking to discharge, it's just 5 divided by omega naught. All right. And then something else. Convolution in the time domain becomes multiplication in the S plane. Well, if we're already in the S plane or the S domain, right, we're already using the Laplace, then we don't really need the convolution integral. And in fact, um, most electrical engineers avoid the convolution integral unless uh, you, you can't take the Laplace transform of something, right? So yeah, what is my suggestion? Uh, use omega naught. Okay. Now this, I I was using alpha kind of in my notes, but there's a lot. I even in my notes I have a lot of integration variables as tau, um, and I I even have examples where yeah you're integrating. Um, this right. And that's the other option, too, is you can just use RC as if it was a variable. All right. I hope um, that this helps uh, tell you which tau is what when you're using it um, and how to make sure you don't get confused, which I would say is just, just use omega naught. All right. Because that's where we're heading anyway.